This is Project Eunice 2.0. This is the cab over. This was absolutely the most labor intensive part of this entire project. It was the most heartbreaking part of the project and it was also the most rewarding part of the project and this video is going to go over some of the things we did. So before I get into the actual construction and that sort of thing, what I want to show is something that was pointed out to me uh, on my camper. Uh, There's a couple of things. So number one, all these older Class C's have this window on the front and they are just notorious for leaking. So if you're thinking about buying an older Class C, just understand that this window probably does leak. I did my best to put like seal on it and everything like that and I could never really get it. Part of this project, we did take some of it out, seal it all back and put it back together. Um, but just something to be aware of as these windows leak and also here's where we really noticed the damage and it wasn't apparent until I looked back at some of these pictures. What I did is I drew just a straight line across the bottom of these. And you can see on this, you can see this where my mouse is, you can see this droop or this sag on here. Okay, so this all should be nice straight across. It should be nice and solid looking and it wasn't. The reason for this all of this sag and everything is because there's just so much water damage in this rot. And I mean, just, and you can see this picture here, like things just were looking really, really bad. So this is with the cushion removed. And I actually, at this point, had taken all of the old nasty wood out. Um, and this was all done by hand. I, and, and I actually had like a little shovel. And I, what I did is I just had to scoop out the old wood in the, uh, uh, in the panel board that was in there. It was just so bad. Uh, the other thing that was really bad, too, was this piece of wood that goes across. This supports that horizontal, and this is, supports that seam underneath and where everything was let go and all the screws were rusted uh you have this droop and you can see like this is the sheet metal where my mouse is this is the sheet metal and this should be butted straight up against uh the aluminum here and all screwed together but it wasn't because all the screws were just rusted and everything was rotted as well as there was just no real support in the front so i was i was really worried about this thing uh on the positive though the walls, the two side walls were not all that bad. Uh, they were bad, but they were, there was still some structure left to it. Uh, and then on the front, I mean, it was just, you can see all the wrinkles and everything on the wallpaper. There was just a lot of water damage. So one of the things that I was really afraid of was I didn't know, like, if I was going to get up there, you know, and I didn't want to, like, come falling through the front of this thing, you know, and all the neighbors would laugh at me or whatever. But, like, I had to build something. I felt better putting some structure up there to give it a little bit of support while I was working on it. So I just built these stilts and I just have, I had two going across the front. One, this guy was pretty solid looking. Uh, another was just made by two by fours. And then just these two guys on the side kept everything up. That way I could get up there, work on it. And I really didn't have to worry about it. So uh, something in any project, you know, this just goes for anything. It's like, you had, I, I had no idea what to do. Not a clue what to do and how to fix this cab over, but I just wanted to get some kind of a starting point. So that's the most important thing. Find a place to start. Might not be the right thing, but at least you get a starting point. And you can start getting some momentum on the repair of it. So first thing I did, I ended up getting half-inch poplar plywood. This stuff was awesome. It was so easy to work with. It was nice and smooth, and we wanted to paint up there. And I didn't want to, like, paint the regular plywood that you see. I wanted to have it like look nice and smooth, so this actually worked out really well. I'm not going to get into how I did all the cutting. It was just really, it was a lot of measuring. Uh, it was like, you know, measure, you know, I don't know, measure twice, cut once. It was like measure 300 times and cut a few times and trim and, and whatever. But um, at any rate, I got those things cut, and I ended up putting these things in. I put screws in around the whole outer perimeter here. So these are just drywall screws, and they're screwed into that aluminum frame. Uh, kind of like what you saw in the previous or a couple pictures ago, it was just screwed in around the perimeter and then the window frame I screwed in. And once I got this thing in, like once I got this first piece in, it was kind of like, oh, cool. Now this thing is actually starting to feel a little bit more solid. So now like this project, you know, this part of it was starting to get momentum. But you can see up above, you can see on the ceiling, just water damage and just, oh, it was so bad looking. It was just so disheartening. But this was starting to feel better. And the thing is, is now the other thing is, I made this, I then made this front piece on here too. Uh, same thing, it's a half inch poplar. Uh, you know, the thing is with these campers, it's something to be aware of too. You can't do any of your cutting on the inside of the camper because it's just too small. Everything has to be done outside. So we took this piece of wood out, in and out probably six or seven times just to get it to fit. Uh, I was 
I don't want to say I was conservative with the cutting, so I knew I was leaving a little extra, so in case I had to trim it down, it was a lot easier because you can't add to the wood, you can only take away. So put in this one piece, it was eventually screwed on the perimeter, everything was also, uh, I used construction adhesive and kind of pressed everything together, so it made one solid wall. Uh, this is just showing that the other side got put in, and at this point, things are getting a little bit more solid. Now, one of the previous slides, I mentioned that horizontal piece of wood that expanded, that went across the span and the width of the camper, and it gave it that support. This was the replacement for it. So I think in the next couple slides, this will make a little bit more sense, but all of this is, uh, is two pieces of half-inch poplar plywood, butted up, screwed to each other, and then I put a piece of angle iron in there. And where that actually went was up in the front, this gave that support. So it's kind of like a bridge. There's really, in the middle of this, if this piece of wood isn't here, there's no support. And the, the, the whole thing was, you know, wobbling all over the place because before everything was so rotted out. So what this piece did, as we put it in, we were able to tighten everything up. And this acted as kind of like a bridge and gave it that support across the span. It gave it that horizontal support. It was very, very, very important. I don't know if your camper would be like this or not. I kind of assume it would be. I, I just don't know that for sure because this is the only camper I've ever done. Uh, so what it's showing too, you can see some screws in the perimeter of the front piece here. And then also this guy. And this guy got screwed into this piece of plywood on the bottom. So just a little bit better picture of what that piece of wood looked like across, um, across that span. And then over to the right, what I did is I just showed, you know, I just tried to represent the plywood and show how this thing is installed. Um, and, you know, we got that in. We put screws into the bottom. This, piece, this seam over here, this piece of metal, uh, you can just get, I got it at the local camping supply store, uh, and then put screws into the bottom of it. Those screws actually went up into the piece of aluminum, that aluminum bar that was above it, and then uh, from the top of this new wood that we put in the support, so to speak, with the angle iron in it, we just put screws in that. Uh, and that went into the plywood and it all squeezed itself together. And then you can see the seam across here. It doesn't have that droop anymore. It's all straight across. So this was, uh, this was kind of like the pivotal moment of the rebuild. We said, hey, it's starting to look a little more straight. It's starting to look like a camper again. And it actually was really nice and solid. So just another picture. I just threw a piece of, you know, a piece of wood on the top just so it didn't look like it was open. Another picture at nighttime because, um, Oh, I remember why I took this picture, because uh, we used the same thing up on top for the ceiling. The ceiling was uh, not really strong, so that had a little bit of water damage to it. So we put a ton of adhesive uh, on the back side of this panel, and then we screwed around the perimeter. There's also, if you look on the right side here where my mouse is, there's angle iron, and I put angle iron in a couple different places, and then also screwed around the perimeter of the frame for the roof vent. So this was really, really nice and solid. Once we got this thing in and like I, I let everything dry a little bit, I went on top of the roof and I walked around and I wasn't, you know, it was nice and solid. So I figured I must have done, uh, must have done something right. So the thing I didn't like and the thing that I was trying to get away from is I wanted this to have a nice solid look. And what I didn't like was this, just a piece of plywood kind of hanging out in the open like that. I know we're going to eventually put a mattress on top of here, but I didn't really like the way it looked. And I did, uh, early on in the project, make these boards here to replace what was there. And I didn't like them. So I, these ended up in the fire. Uh, I was very happy to see them go. So one of the things I did, and this is one of the ideas I got really excited about and I really wanted to share, was, um, you know, so these older Class C, I mean, all Class Cs, I think, have this gap in here where, you know, you, you take the wood off, take the cushion out of the way, you take the wood off, and then you can go in and out of the driver's cab a lot easier. Um, you don't bang your head or anything or whatever, but I didn't like that and I, I you know, I'm not a really tall guy So I didn't have to really worry about banging my head So I made this this bridge or this deck thing which then just uh, Went across where that gap is and I wanted to fill in that gap It was kind of I don't know it was just kind of important to me to have a different look than what I've seen in other Restorations of Class C campers. So just something to note on this slide uh, on the bottom kind of like in the ceiling of that crossover or whatever we want to call it. I don't know technical names. Um, that's my biggest downfall. I don't know technical names. So I'm kind of just making stuff up as I go along. But this piece of wood was the ceiling for the span. That is just quarter inch maple. I'll show you that in just a second. 
So this is just, I want to get this picture out too because, um, you know, I have never, like I said, probably a, a bunch of times I've said already, I've never done this before. I really knew, I knew I didn't know what I was doing, so I identified my deficiencies and then try to mitigate that by uh, uh, just putting things into place so that I wouldn't mess stuff up too much. I still made plenty of mistakes. Um, so on this, on these kinds of, this wood is really expensive. I didn't want to muck it up too much. So I did use a guide for my skill saw and this helped make nice straight lines. I took a lot of time to measure things and then, you know, measuring things and getting it right. Uh, it was a lot easier when you're trying to install things. So there's a picture of my old man just holding down the wood. I don't know, maybe it was a windy day. I don't quite remember, but he was just holding down the wood, but presto. Everything gets installed, and this was really the look, and this is the thing that I was really excited the most to show about. I'll go on to another picture where it's a little bit more clean on here, and, you know, you can see that all the wood is in, a lot of the trim is in, uh, these uh, vertical pieces are in, and then I have one piece of plywood going across the top. Eventually put in aluminum angle iron to kind of cover up the seams, but this is really what I was looking for. And the thing, the way that, that this hole came out, this, this cab over came out, is nice and solid. My old man and I got up there and we were just kind of rolling around a little bit, you know, trying to make it crack and creak or whatever, and it was nothing. It was nice and super solid. So it was really, really exciting. Um, this was just an idea, you know, this is the direction I took. If you have a camper, you may or may not take the same direction, but this is this is my idea. Then. Another thing that, that ended up doing on this was, this was the ceiling to that bridge that I had discussed. So I ended up getting, um, I took a little piece of the vinyl interior from the van part of it, went down, I got the paint to match that color, and that's what we just painted the ceiling with. And as a matter of fact, the rest of the camper, the trim in the rest of the camper is painted the same color. So it kind of let the cab and the, um, uh, the rest of the camper all kind of, blend together and you can kind of see that a little bit better in the next picture so this is with the cab over completed there's uh, all the trim is in it's painted the window frames are painted we do have a futon mattress that we put up here uh, but we took it out for some reason and then uh, we'll get pillows pillows are just all over the place picture on the right what I want to show is you know the the um, oh the ceiling is painted I did like three coats of super glossy white paint and I was told you're really not supposed to use a gloss for the ceiling, but it made a huge difference. It made it all nice and bright in there. I just, I loved it. So the other thing is, you know, previous pictures, you see the, the piece of plywood, the ceiling here, is just kind of butted up against the original ceiling so that you're going to see the edge of the plywood. I got around that by putting in just a piece of angle iron, this aluminum angle iron over the wood. And it actually, all together, it looks like it's supposed to be there. So that came out really good. Um, the other thing is, you see this piece of pipe, which is just half-inch uh, EMT. It's just an electrical conduit, and that became the curtain rod. So it just goes across. These are two shower curtains. Uh, it worked awesome. The length was just right. Everything kind of fit together on this thing. It was just, oh, and it gave it this, like, nice, chic look. We were really, really, really just excited about, about this whole thing probably tell I'm really excited about this part because when I first started I was just broken hearted I didn't know what to do I knew I would fix it absolutely knew this was going to get done I just didn't know how to do it got traction figured out how to do it and then got it done and it just came out awesome this is towards just about towards the end and you can see the aluminum angle on here also around where you enter in the cab I did put aluminum trim all around that it's just it is just aluminum angle iron and then across the top, which is also the aluminum. Uh, and it gave it a really nice, like, chic industrial look. If that's a thing, I guess that's what we were going for. And then pillows. Uh, my wife put pillows everywhere. There are pillows all over this camper. But I, it's fine. I like the pillows, I think. Um, but this is at the first camping trip. And I, the other thing that we did, too, is we put in these LED lights uh, that made everything nice and bright and happy, but the cab over it was absolutely it was like the centerpiece. So this is what we ended up doing. I really wanted to share how we did. I think this is a little bit different than people have done these kind of uh, fixing up the cab over in, in other videos that I've seen. Uh, not saying this is the best way, but this is a way to do it. Uh, this is something I really hope that helps because the cab overs are a big issue on older Class Cs. So 
Yeah, I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching.